Hi, my name's Amy and welcome to One Mommy Scrapping. Today, we're gonna to talk about organization. Let's get started. So I've been asked over and over by people to do a room tour. And I have yet to do one because this is my room. Let me move my computer. There is stuff everywhere. And I'm knocking stuff off my desk table too as I move my computer screen. And that's why I've not done a room tour. I call that spot I just showed you over there my, my corner of shame. It's kind of a mountain right now. Um, but I am now on summer vacation. If you don't know, I am a third grade teacher. And um, so I do that by day and by night. Well, I was going to say I'm a scrapbooker, but by night I sleep because teaching wears me out. Which is one reason why my room looks like this. Um, I'm kind of glad I can't turn the screen to show you my second desk over here. Because... So let's chat for a little bit real quick before we get started. Um, and while we chat, I'm actually going to put some stuff away because I currently have an exploded everything over here. Um, I've been scrapbooking since 1998. It has been a while. I started scrapbooking um, when I was in college and I saw some scrapbooking stuff in Walmart. That doesn't tell you how long ago this was. Um, and it was my boyfriend and I's first anniversary and I thought it would be great to make him a little scrapbook. And clearly he liked it because he's not my husband. So my husband and I have been together since 1997. And he is very supportive of this scrapbooking habit slash hobby slash money sink. Cause you know, yeah. See, look, I've now organized something. Well, in those 20 some years, I have managed to accumulate a lot of stuff. And some of it is stuff that I really, really love. Um, like back here, there's my Nouveau drop collection. I love my Nouveau drops. And I love my embellishment mousse. And there are things though I don't really like. And I always feel guilty getting rid of stuff. And I think that's been my biggest problem all these years is the guilt of, oh my goodness, this piece of paper is going to be unfulfilled with its life purpose. Because I tend to put feelings on other things and I know I'm not alone out there. So don't even pretend that some of you are shaking your head along with it going, yeah. I wanna use every last sticker. I wanna use every last scrap of paper. I want to get my full money's worth because when I started this, there was one, not a lot available. I mean, we're talking Walmart in the mountains. It was like, you know, they have their little sections. It was like two or three of those. That was it. Uh, the idea of a scrapbook store never entered into my mind. And that's what I used. And I really enjoyed it. I had my decorative scissors because it was the late nineties and everybody had to have their decorative scissors. I almost called them skizzers because they're a great teacher. Um, and I had some stickers and um, I had some colored paper and that was it. I have sticker sneeze all over my first album at some point. I will show that to you guys too, but that, mm, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I need to this summer set a goal of getting rid of my corner of shame. Um, the last time I did a huge, huge room rearrangement before the one I just did a year ago was in 2012. It was on my old blog and I actually have, um, it was my, my most viewed posts were the organizational pictures that I did. And I really like it. It's really fun coming across some of the stuff on Pinterest and going, oh, that's mine. <laughs> Somebody else pinned it and it wasn't me. <laughs> but I also know that I've had that corner of shame since 2012. It's been almost 10 years of a, of a corner of some sort where I just kind of put stuff and I've spent the, the past two and a half months sitting in this chair teaching my third graders, which made it very difficult to come in here to relax when it was also my classroom for distance learning. So I've, Friday was my first official day of summer vacation where I did not have to go to school. I closed out my classroom last week, which was a lot of work, let me tell you. Um, and I decided that I'm going to do, hopefully, a series, a summer series on organizing this and kind of taking you guys through that journey of how 
I'm planning on doing things in the hopes that this helps you guys. Because I have, I have watched the organization videos. I have watched the organization classes. I have seen the checklists of 10 weeks to do it and you get it all done. And I'm like, sounds great. And then, you know, life happens. Because I look at 10 weeks and I'm going in 10 weeks, I'm going to be back at school. In that time, I'm going to have my trip to my parents' house for 4th of July. I'm going to have my sister's wedding. And I'm like, I'm going to have weeks where I'm not even going to be home. And so I look at that and go, I can't do it. So I figured I would start this. And I think I'm going to do kind of a combo vlog, blog, organization video type thing. Kind of tie it all together. So my first step is, I think, going to be to clean out this cart. And let me see if I can potentially move my computer monitor and change that. So you guys can see this cart. Okay, it's a Rascog. This is not part of it. That's my little spinny tool. But it's this thing right here. And this is what I'm using for my memory books. And this has been the big project. Um, my uh, coworker, who she and I have been there since the school opened 17 years ago, has left. And I can say that now without bursting into tears. So <laughs> progress. But I was making her a memory book. And that's actually the dies I was just putting away were the memory book dies because I made, it was, you know, six pages, 12 front and back. And there was a lot that went into it. And so a lot of that, getting that project done over this past month between teaching and that project, this is a disaster. So step one for me is to organize this. And the reason I'm choosing that for step one is because it's a small chunk. I know I can do that. Whereas if I go, let me just tackle this corner over here, there's going to be a big fat no on that because there's no way I can tackle that corner without getting like this stuff cleaned up and my desk cleaned up. And this is pretty much a vertical representation of my second desk. Yes, I have two desks because I like to invite friends over. Miranda and Fran, they share this desk when they come. They come at different times, so... Although they better come at some point together this summer. I'm just saying. Um, so this is kind of a messy vertical thing. That's a messy horizontal thing. But for me, I know I tend to clean and I'll clean my desk off. And I'll turn to this and I'll clean this off. And while I'm cleaning this off, I put stuff on my desk. And I kind of bounce. And I'm sure it sounds like the most unorganized way to organize. And yet it's a way that works for me. I notice that it's school because I have my teacher desk, which is piled with crap. Let me tell you, when we left on March 13th, there was a mountain. When I came back in June, there was still a mountain. And I'm going, hmm, not good. But that's what I did. I have my desk and then I had a table for my desk. I got to kind of go back and forth so that way I can sort things out, put them in piles, address those piles, resort the piles, put them back here. I kind of do that. It's probably not the most effective way, but it works for me and it works for how my brain works. And that's something I have discovered over all of these years is that you've got to figure out the way your brain works when it comes to how you scrapbook. How do you think about paper? How do you think about embellishments? I know for me, I'm someone that likes, I think of paper by manufacturer. I want Bella Boulevard. I want Basic Gray. I want Echo Park. I want Paige Evans. I want Close to My Heart. I want something like that. And so my paper is all stored by manufacturer. Other things are stored by color. Like I have little drawers that are pull out the stuff and you get all your blue embellishments. Pull out another drawer, get all your red embellishments. Because when I start adding embellishments at that point, when I'm not in the collection, that's what I'm like, oh, I need something pink here. And yet then when it comes to Nuvo Drops, let me readjust this camera. I put Nuvo Drops on every layout. So I know I need them close range and I need them all by color because I'm going to organize, I'm going to pull them out no matter what. And I need a way so, to see them. By the way, to organize this, I decided I've gone back and forth on how to do things. And I think I'm going to use something from Ikea, which I don't know where it is. I have a box. Tucker, can you go place? Oh, there it is. <sighs> these things. I use these in my classroom. Dude, place. Like I said, please. Sits. Blind. Thank you. Uh, these are magazine files. Flit, Flight, F-L-Y-T. I think it's $2 and you get five of them. I use these as book boxes in my classroom. And um, if you read my Ikea saga on Facebook, you will understand these. They came damaged. 
although getting them replaced in, is go probably going to be too much of a headache, so I'm just going to suck it up and deal. So my thought, though, is right now, let me turn again, I'm going to turn this way, just tuck her, smile for the camera, Tucker. Uh, I've got a microphone that wants to fall, oh, and it's going to fall into my keyboard, all right. So I have all of my specific paper for memory books up here. And this is the heavy thick stuff. And I buy the big hundred sheets. It's 110 pound, 300 GSM. It's from Michaels. This stuff works great as bases. And then I also have some colored cardstock. It's not quite the thickness of these four colors here. Um, that I will use as backgrounds. And then I have my nice tonic, like specialty stuff. Although this of course is the classic card I just pulled out, but I have my things that are like, ah, there we go. Like the glittery stuff. And I decided I want to go ahead and put them in this. This will let them stay upright, hypothetically. <laughs> so that way, when I go to pull them out, they're not all going to tip over, which was a problem that I had earlier. Now, I use for my memory book to hold the base pages, I use one of the Tonic Studios large ink binder. Let me tell you, this stuff is simply amazing. These magnets. There's one magnet in there, double-sided, and it holds brilliantly. And I want more of these, and finding them is like looking for gold. It's not going to happen. Let me pick up something that fell on the floor. Here we are. So I went ahead and made my own. I found little clear envelopes from Amazon and then some 8x10 adhesive uh, magnet. And then I just mounted it on a piece of poster or piece of thin cardboard. You could use chipboard. Is this perfect? No. Is this as nice or as strong as the tonic ones? No. But I can't find the tonic ones anywhere. There is nowhere in the United States I have been able to locate them. It was a miracle I found just the binder. So until they come back in stock and I'm able to get some more, this is going to work. Not only that, I know where they are. Now that is a little tight. So instead of pushing those forward, I'm going to push those back. There we go. And then I can put them right here. I can still easily get to my paper and I can easily get to these magnets. The next step, I've still got, and I, look at this, I still have one of these left over. So this I can use for somewhere else in my room. So I'm going to do what I've been doing for two and a half months and just set it on top of my other desk of stuff. I will see if I can use that in my other Rascog. I don't know. Next level. It's got some things that I no longer need because the project for my friend is done. Now I save all of these so that way when I do videos, I can actually show the packaging for the ones that I've used. And it's really not a requirement, but I just like to do that. Here are some of my other memory books that I've been working on. 